I'm Tina from Victoria Designs and boy do I have a great new mini project for you. A layered folio with a vintage newspaper, investigative journalism team and in this tutorial I will show you from A to Z how to make this layered folio. And the best thing is all the principles that you need to make this project, all the principles that I am going to use in this tutorial, you can get for free if you opt in via the link in the description. So you can make this yourself right now. Everybody who makes a bit of an effort to cut and fold straight can make this project. So it's really nice for beginners but expert crafters will really love making this as well. You don't really need any fancy tools and if I do use them in this tutorial I will give you an alternative. The designs of this project are based on our vintage newspapers kit. I will put the links under this video. If you want to make this project with physical scrapbook paper that you already have or with other printable papers, I have a template version for you in our shop as well. The link is below as well. And now let's craft. So this is what you're going to make. This little loaded layered folio. I'm gonna remove this clip. This is the closure. Oh yeah, if you don't want to add this type of closure, you can just not attach this and close the side with a clip. That's perfectly possible, then you don't need this. This is on its own a little pocket and it holds a card like this. You can write in there or make it a pocket on, on their own if you add a few uh, pieces of extra tape here. Then when we go like this, we have a uh, corner pocket here that holds this little uh, card again with the tabs. And then when we open it, we have another pocket that is a pocket on its own where you can put uh, mementos, notes, whatever you want in there. And it has this um, taggy card inside there, so it's a pocket on its own. These center pockets also have two of these beautiful, cute coin envelopes in there. It's all in the kit, by the way. There, and this side pocket has these two cute mini envelopes in there. Let's see? Yes, that's where we are. So this is a very, very beautiful loaded um, mini folio, loaded layered mini folio as I call it. And then this would make such a great gift. I have alternatives if you don't have an eyelet setter. Or indeed, as I said, you can just use a clip instead if you don't want to use this type of closure. Let's put this on here as well. Again, if you want to make this yourself, just opt in via the link in the description and you can download all the printables you need to make this project. And you really don't need a lot of extra tools. I have an alternative if you don't have eyelets and an eyelet setting, or you can just not use this closure and use a clip on the side as well. And for the rest, you just need basic, basic craft tools like scissors, glue, bit of ink. And now let me show you how to make this. So these are the sheets that you will get. You get eight pages and two back designs. I'm going to show you how I printed them. I printed everything on 160 grams paper. That's about 60 pound cover. On my pages, the text is a little bit disappearing because I'm printing on A4. These designs are made on leather sheets and I print them on A4. So A4 people, you can use these as well perfectly. Okay, so the first one is the base and on the back I printed a full back design. The one with the newspaper print. Page two, I printed the full design. Page three, I also printed the full design on the back. Page four, absolutely not necessary. And how can you actually see that? Because it says print on back of back design on the page. So this has nothing on the back. And this says, yeah, you can hardly see it of course, Print on back of bag design or ink white parts. Why? Because if you want to save on ink, just don't print a bag design on the back like I did, but you should, you're going to have to ink this part, about this part on both envelopes. And then this one doesn't have a bag design. This one also doesn't. And this one again, print on back of bag design or ink white parts is going to be the edges here and a little bit here. So, and now let me show you how to assemble this. And of course, the first step every time is, yes, to cut everything out. 
And this can be a relaxing job in front of the television or when you're watching YouTube videos or when you have a crafty afternoon with your friends, you can just do this together. So I'm going to cut everything out and I'm gonna come back to you so I'm in my cutting process and most of it I already cut with my paper trimmer, especially these straight ones and pieces with my uh, scissors. These I'm going to completely cut with my scissors just because it's much easier than with the paper trimmer. And I didn't cut these fully yet because I want to assemble them first before cutting so they match up better. So these tabs here and this closure here. And I didn't cut these out properly yet for a simple reason that I'm otherwise going to lose these two. So I'm going to keep these for last and I'm now going to cut these out by hand. And the more precise you cut, the better this whole project will fit. Of course, I've got to tell you something. Well, it's actually pretty straightforward, but please, please print every sheet with the same printer settings. So don't Print page 1 at the fit to page setting and page 2 at 100% setting because things are not gonna match. You might think, yeah, well, why would I do that? Why would I print with different settings? Well, I'm pretty sure sometimes printers get a life of their own. So it's just uh, keep an eye on that, that you print all of the sheets with the same printer settings, please. So I cut everything out that I already could cut out. And now the next part that I want to do in one go is already start inking the edges. You can do that part by part when you're tackling that part, but I like to do that in one go. Okay, and I use this Vintage Photo Distress Oxide for this. You can use Walnut Stain as well or other brown colors. You can, you can use hot pink ink if you like. I'm using Distress Oxide because it's more opaque, uh, but you can definitely just use ink as well. Really doesn't matter. So I'm just going to ink all the edges, give it an extra ink. Of course, it has a faux ink edge, but like the sides of the paper is still white. And I don't know if you can see it here because it's, of course, cardstock. And yeah, and I'm also a perfectionist. So yeah, I don't want to see that white. If you're not a perfectionist, <laughs> don't bother. Okay, so I'm going to ink all of the edges that's necessary. Oh, uh, yeah. For this one, this is the base, of course I'm going to ink the edges, but, second, <laughs> then I'm going to explain the but. Yeah, on the back, it's like this, I'm going to make the edges pretty heavy. I'm going to ink them pretty heavily, because you're going. this is going to show. So I'm doing it pretty rough and pretty hard, you know? There, so the same with the, um, these cards that are going to be embellishments. These are going to be fold in half, so I'm also going to already ink these edges. Not as hard, well, you do what you want, of course. You can make them as grungy as you want. And of course, these panels only need inking on the sides. If you want it even more grungy, you can use a black ink and just make these um, edges more grungy, blacky. You do you. Of course, tabs don't need inking. Only the parts that are showing. Yes, and the parts that I didn't cut out here yet, of course, I can't ink them yet, but I will touch that up later, of course. And of course, these tabs, etc., also have uh, printing on the inside even if it, if it doesn't need that but yeah I just wanted to as economically possible put everything on the papers that's why some of the things that didn't need a back design still have one these I'm gonna do later so and now in one go again I'm going to score all the lines that need scoring that I can already do again because I like that I like to have everything done like a little factory but if you don't like that of course you can do that with every piece on its own i like to use a scoreboard for this because it's fast if you don't have one just use an empty pen or an embossing pen a ruler and a mat underneath so and i'm just going to score all the lines that need scoring of course 
like with the cutting, do it as straight as possible. The straighter, the more this project will, will actually work. Yeah, these I'm gonna do later. This is the base, that's the most important one to get really straight. Yes, I'm not going to fold anything yet, just scoring all the lines, so that's done. Most of it, these things are scored now, and now I'm just going to start working on my base piece. That's that one. And I'm going to fold it inward. And I'm using a bone folder to make crisp folds. Optional, but that's a, this is a handy thing. If you've seen my video about the essential tools that I find pretty essential, this is one of them. Okay, and so you see that the center panel is a little bit wider than the side panels. You see, it's a little bit open here. That's by design, that's not a fault. And now I'm going to add the panels. First, going to make sure that the printing is the right way up. Now for the printing part itself, it doesn't matter if the uh, newspaper printing is up or down because it's the same all around. But now we're going to assemble it, make sure that this printing is the right way up. And I'm going to find my three panels here. So these are the ones and take care. Of course, this middle panel also have, has a wider center part, you see? If I lay them on top of each other, the back one is the middle part because it's an eighth of an inch, like three millimeter wider. So this one goes in the middle, this one goes here, and this one goes here. And I'm already going to glue these in. Now for the speed of this video, I'm going to use a glue stick. You have glue sticks that are super strong. I couldn't find one, so I'm just using a regular one. You can use tacky glue that will hold a lot longer or fabric tack for sure. So, I'm just quickly going to add glue, especially on the sides. Yes, you can also use double-sided tape, of course. So make sure the sides have enough glue. And glue them in and make sure you have an even border all around. Like this. There. I'm going to glue these in as well. three are glued in and already it's a lot sturdier and it's a lot prettier it's starting to look really good it's going to fold like this but we're going to add something else and that's this part so I'm gonna put this aside for a bit and I'm going to fold this base pocket there Nice crisp folds. There. And for this one, I also have two panels. And these are the two panels. So they actually represent parts of book um, spines. And I'm going to attach these first the same way with some glue. You use the glue that you want. Nicely in the center again, like this. So, and this is going to be a pocket and a card will be in the pocket. And to get the card out a bit more easily, you can add a notch if you want. And you can use a circle punch for that, or you can use this notch punch if you like. I'm just going to use a circle punch. I'm first going to find the center here. Yeah, you can punch the notch on both sides if you like, but I only want it on this side. And I'm going to find the center here. Well, I'm actually going to draw on the back. It's better. That's the center. 
And now I'm going to cut out half a notch like this. That's why I first wanted to attach the uh, panel on top. So now it is perfectly aligned. I'm going to add some ink here. Like this. And of course, when I close it now, you see a little bit of white here. Or you punch out the back as well, but I didn't really want to. So I'm just going to... Yeah, it's here. So I add a little bit of ink here. And now when I close it, you see this. So it's a lot better. You can actually add a little bit more ink here. So if you peek inside the pocket, that's the perfectionist of me coming out again. You can actually, you don't actually see the white, you know? So, and now I'm going to assemble this and I'm going to put some tape here on this tab, on this tab, and here as well, but on the back. You will see why. So first on the front on this tab, oh yeah, the fold, especially for the scoring as well, is right here. Not on the edge of that design. Now you can ask, why did you put some ink on there, some design on there, when you're not going to see it? Well, when you fold it and you're a little bit off, otherwise you're going to see this white on this edge here. Why didn't I put ink on the whole tab? Well, I think that's ink, a waste of ink, so that's why. So, put your tape right next to the fold. next to not on because otherwise all your folds are going to be sticky there on the front here as well but here on the back well actually tip you can do this with a, a pen uh, a color pen as well if you like but I'm going to add a little bit of ink here because otherwise you're going to see like a tiny bit here. Okay, so now I'm going to put some ink uh, tape on top right next to that fold again. Not on, just right next to. Don't remove that backing yet. If you're using not tape, but just glue, that's perfectly possible. I forgot to mention that, by the way. You can definitely use just glue. Don't put glue on this yet, because we're going to use that for later. Just put glue here then. And now to close it, I am first going to close the side. So I'm removing the back of the side and then I'm going to put this corner of this tab on top, because then when you put something in here, it will not catch behind this piece of paper. That's the trick. And then I'm going to remove this part as well. And I'm going to carefully close it. Even if you were super straight with cutting and folding and scoring, etc., still check if everything lines up well enough. So now I have my pocket. It's nicely closed and it has a tab. And now. I'm going to bring this back again. I'm gluing this on here. If you like, you can glue this a little bit higher as well. You can definitely do that. Oh, well, why not? Why not? I'm going to remove this backing, or now is the time to add some tape here. I'm actually going to... It's going to go like this, but I find it easier to um, glue it in here like this this way and yeah i'm going to keep a little bit from the bottom here but you can definitely just glue this part completely to the bottom you can really play with this okay so and now our piece looks like this so how you close it this one this one and this closes like this and the next piece I'm going to attach is a closure. Now this is optional. If you just want to put a ribbon around here, you can definitely do that. So this is my closure. 
And I'm first going to assemble it. So you see, I haven't cut out this piece yet. I already scored this center line. There. Let's see if it lines up. If it doesn't line up properly, it's okay. You can just cut out a little bit from the edge and it will still work fine. Um, this piece, oh, I forgot to score this piece. I'm gonna quickly score this little line here, this tab. This folds up. So I'm not going to look at this part yet, but I'm just going to glue these two parts together. So I'm just going to put glue one half and I'm just going to close it. I already checked earlier and I saw that it closes pretty well. And again, I'm going to add some ink here. This was really not worth it to put some a back design here. So that's enough. Now first I'm going to cut this out and check if it, it's aligned on both sides. It is actually. But if it's not, it's okay. You can hide any white with some extra ink. There. You see I have a little bit of white here, like, like, a, like a tiny bit and of course you can um, definitely ink that but I'm just going to cut this piece off it really doesn't matter if it's like a tiny little bit wider or not and just ink again there now this will come on top here again wherever you like it but before I'm going to do that I am going to punch a hole here here and here. There are a few options here. The hole here is for tying the ribbon and you don't need to have holes here but you can. I'm going to show you. So I'm going to put an eyelet right here. This is an eyelet with a wide rim but it can be uh, one with a short rim. You can also use, if you like, if you don't have an eyelet setting tool or eyelet, these hole reinforcements. These used to be white, but I just went over with some ink like this, and this is the result. Take care. You can't just do that with any hole reinforcement. Most of them are very glossy and plasticky. Ink will not set on that. Some people said, yeah, you can sand them first. Yeah, you can try that. I haven't, but I found these ones um, and they're actually papery. So the ink just sticks for the Dutch and Flemish viewers amongst you. This is from the action years ago. I don't know if they still have them. Okay, so why does it need reinforcement? Well, if we're going to add a hole, even if it's double layered now, it's over time it's going to damage this hole here and maybe even pull through completely. And I maybe, I'm not sure, but if you put a few layers of these on top and also on the back, it will probably last longer. You can also cut a few of these from sturdy scrapbook paper that would hold even longer, of course. But the longest is still just using an eyelet. I just wanted to give you an alternative for if you wouldn't have one. So I'm just going to make a mark in the center. Here it is. And then I'm going to see if this is about half an inch. Yeah, half an inch is 1.3 millimeter by the way. But if you like to have it closer to the edge, you can or further, that's just what you want. I'm going to punch a hole on that mark. Put the eyelet in. And Normally the settings are still where they should be. Like this. So this one's in. The idea is that this comes here, this gets attached here. A ribbon or a twine is going to be attached here and then all around. But at some point, the twine is going to go here. Which means over time, I'm afraid this is going to really damage these corners or even completely tear through. You can solve this by adding an extra layer here or some extra tape on the back to, to uh, protect this. So that's perfectly possible or even a piece of fabric here, for example. 
or put some tape all around like just reinforce this piece but what i'm going to do is i'm going to add an extra eyelet here and here so that's another more sustainable solution and i'm going to make them fairly close to the edge so about quarter of an inch or six millimeters from the edge also from this edge yeah i have fairly large eyelets here you have smaller as well these are 3 16 you have uh, one eight as well so 3 16 is about four or five millimeter wide and uh, the one eight is three millimeter wide you can use the same settings Punching the holes and now setting the eyelets here. Of course, if you want the placement more towards the center, you can do that as well. There. So that's my closure. Again, you can solve this uh, with these, make it sturdier with scrapbook paper, etc. So now I'm going to attach this here. So I'm going to add some tape here on the back again. Oh yes, for this I use um, 3 eighths of an inch tape. That's about 9 millimeter. Doesn't really matter. But for some projects I'd rather use... Well, actually I'm doing it wrong. Uh, yeah, yes, I can still... Okay, so for this one, for once, I'm going to put the tape not right next to the fold, but right next to the edge of the tap. This way it will have more movement uh, when it's in use. I'm going to explain. So if you use smaller tape, you can do that, but make sure you have like a small eighth of an inch, um, like two millimeters left here so it can actually move around this piece so usually i always say right next to the fold right next to the fold well now it's not too close to the fold there and now you can actually check for yourself where you want to glue it do you want it here do you want it more up like this etc i think i'm going to put it more in the center of the whole booklet here you can measure i'm not gonna so I'm keeping this fold closed, so I'm lining up where I want it, and then I'm going to fold it over. I'm not going to glue it like this, because then it would be more to the side, and it would be harder to close. And now we have a little bit of wiggle room to actually close this. Just make sure you don't put it too far to that side, so it can hardly move. Okay, and now... I'm going to open this and the next thing I'm going to do is attach this corner pocket here. That's this one. It fits right here. And for that I am going to put some tape just on the side and on the bottom. But this time I'm not going to use my 3 8 of an inch 9 millimeter tape. I'm going to use my 6 millimeter quarter of an inch tape. Then, um, well, there's more room in the pocket. And it still really holds everything pretty well. You have smaller tape, but that wouldn't hold as much. That's really, really nice for really small projects. Okay, so I have my tape here and here. Now I'm going to show you something optional that you can do throughout the whole project, but I'm just going to show you with this. I am going to add some extra brads here. So I'm going to remove the tape. If you're using glue, you can use a little, tiny little bit of glue, but not yet if you're going to do this. So with the tape in an hour, it will still be sticky. So I really have the time here. But what I'm going to do is I just add some brads as decoration here. I should have uh, measured first, but I'm just going to now put it on the back here. I have these teeny tiny brads. If the, the, uh, the legs of the brads uh, are too long, this is not going to work for such a small project. But I'm just going to put some brads again about a quarter of an inch, six milliliter from each of these three quarters. Corners. I'm going to 
punch the holes. Oops. This. And they're just decorative. They're not really functional. But I just wanted to show you. That this is a possibility too. Why did I already remove the tape? Well, because it was going to go over the tape. Well, to be fair, I could have added the tape after I added the brad, but okay. This will still work. I have to be careful because for some reason these small brass are super strong. They can hold the refrigerator together, I think. And this is just a piece of light cardstock. So yeah, I have to make sure that I'm not damaging the cardstock here. Go, 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 go. Yes. So, okay. And now it looks like this. Okay, I'm going to add some pieces of tape on top of this here I don't think here it's necessary yeah you can do it you don't have to but here what I do need to do is I need to add a little bit of regular tape here because otherwise my cards are not going to slide in here so yeah of course this could be a problem to slide a card in here so if you don't want that problem it's better to not add these brads in this pocket but i think it's lovely that's why i'm adding them actually going to add another layer here luckily you don't see anything on the back and now I can put this pocket in place right here. So that's why this is a lot bearer here, because this pocket is meant to come here. And it fits perfectly inside this panel. Like this. So again, the brows are optional. Now turn around and I'm going to add the side pocket. This is a side pocket and that one comes here and it will completely cover these two white tabs. For that, I'm gonna turn it around and put some tape here, here, here. Again, my small tape. As close to the edge as you can without going over the edge. If you use glue, again, just a small bead. Use glue with a fine tip. Oopsie, there. Okay. And now this fits completely in the corners against the edge of this part here, like this. And now these two tabs are completely hidden. Oh, I forgot something very important. So I'm removing this. <laughs> Tina, why are you doing this? Well, I forgot something very important, but I'm going to print a new one of these. There. Okay. Did I now just wreck this? No, not at all. I'm going to um, make it better. Because I forgot something I really think you should notice. So I'm going to ink these edges again. And I'm going to print a new one of these. But what I forgot to tell you is to put some clear tape or washi tape or whatever over these tabs. Because otherwise the things that you put in here will catch in these tabs. So. And I'm going to... Make that better like this. And what I'm going to do now is print just one more of these and put it into place and you won't see a thing. 
So here I have my new one, prints, cut, inked, added tape. And now I'm just going to put this on here. like this there and now i'm going to attach the two middle pockets here very simple pockets i'm just going to attach them here again tape 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 tape, tape. The first one just put these between the folds and like a tiny little bit from the bottom there see it fits perfectly it has like a sixteenth of an inch edge on the sides and so I kept one on the bottom as well and this one I'm going to put three inch from the bottom here I'm just going to make a mark that's about seven and a half centimeters so I'm going to put this one here and I'm just going to cover that little mark that I just made. Why did I put it so low? Well, I did that actually. So I'm just covering that mark that I just made. So there are going to come fairly large uh, pocket envelopes in here. And otherwise it will stick out. If you want that, of course, go ahead. And now I'm going to add a pocket here, but the pocket is a pocket that also will serve as a pocket. I call it the pocket pocket in my notes. <laughs> okay, so everything's cut out. And I... So I just fold everything and this will get a circle closure. So I'm going to prepare that right now. And for that, I need these two circles. And these are a tiny bit bigger than 5 8 of an inch. This. So I have a clean cut here. You can cut them out by hand, of course, yourself. Or use pieces of scrapbook paper for this instead of these. Now, on their own, they're a little bit flimsy, even though it's cardstock. So loyal viewers already know that I'm going to attach two layers of scrapbook paper onto this. Yes, I have a whole jar with this size of scrapbook cutouts just for these. And I'm going to glue them on top of each other two by two. And it really doesn't matter what design they have. They're, these are just offcuts from leftover pieces of scrapbook paper. So they're very sturdy. They're going to disappear anyway, but they're going to make these circles a lot sturdier. Then I'm going to glue these circles with the design on top. And to finish these, I'm also going to ink the edges because you see there, the edges are white here. So, and I want one of these circles on top of the flap and one right here. And I'm going to attach them with brads. First I'm going to find the center here. It's about here. Then let's find the center here. Here it is. And I want the other mark to be the same distance that this mark is from this edge from this edge as well. So that's going to be here. Check if it's in the center. Bang in the center. Okay. Of course, if you want these on other places, go ahead. You can definitely vary in this. There, there. Also going to punch holes in the center of these. I have again two of these tiny little brads and I have my 
circle closure help thingy here. So it's just a piece of chipboard with a, a slot. And then I put the brad into this hole. These legs through here. These through the hole. Open the legs. Like this. And here I'm going to attach a piece of tape so it doesn't catch here. And when I take out this piece of chipboard, you have a nice uh, gap here to put the twine around. Same with this one. Brad in circle, legs through here, through the hole. Open these legs, like this. And now because a panel will be on top here, I'm not going to use regular tape for these legs, but I'm going to use a piece of double-sided tape over here, just to protect the paper that's going to come on top of it, like this. Remove this. And then I have this little panel that can go right on top here. Try to center it as much as possible. There you go. So this is hidden and this you're not going to see anyway. So now I'm going to assemble it. I'm going to put some tape here and here. Right next to the fold. I'm going to add a tiny bit of glue here in the point. It had to be such an angle because otherwise you would see the tab when I would close it. And again here, first the side tab, then the bottom tab, so nothing catches here. And then you can close the whole thing. Keep in mind to line up the edges. And there you have it, a really nice pocket. And of course, this square is white because this is going to be put in here. But I'm not going to put glue all over. I'm just going to put tape again at the sides and it will be an extra pocket. So, tape on the sides and on the bottom, remove these backings, and now I'm going to put this with an eighth of an inch margin right here. There you go. Still need some twine to close this. You can use different things, but I'm just going to use this uh, embroidery thread. There you go. And because I use my little helper thingy, I have now more than enough room to put this here. Dutch and Flemish viewers again. This is from Action. Okay, I'm just going to tie this around here, around the top one. Double knot or triple knot, whatever you need. Cut off the excess, tuck in the excess, and then one, two, three, and cut off. So, this one's closed, you can put something in here, and it's a pocket. And now I'm going to show you how to make whatever is going to come in here, and that's this cart. It's a cart, it's print on both sides. And I'm just going to fold this in half. And for this, I'm also going to attach these little tabs here. Yeah, I already tried to score them in the center. I failed miserably, so I'm going to try to rectify the situation. So I'm going to cut these out. 
we're going to attach both of these tabs to the card. Of course, you can do what you want. I think it would be better to not score these and just line up the sides, like the bottoms, when you fold them in half. And then fold like this. I think that's a better idea to not score these up front. Yeah, it's perfect-ish. <laughs> Again, I'm just going to line up these edges, the long edges, and then fold. Yeah, that's a lot better. So now that they're fold, I'm going to now only cut those corners and I'm going to check on the back. Yeah, if you still see some white, use ink, it's all hidden. At least they line up much better. Let's see, this one has a little bit of white left so what i'm going to do is add some ink here and on all the edges by the way and now i'm going to add some glue on one tab all over and i'm going to glue the tab with these corners lining up to the top of the card, right next to the edge of this front. See, so these corners line up with the top of the card here, and it's lined up with the edge of the card. And now I have to add more ink because uh, glue because I am talking too much and not gluing enough. And now I can just glue this over to the other side, you see? And the other one I'm going to attach on the back part of this card right here again line up these corners with the top of the card and line up that side with the edge so glue all over against the edge corners against the top and fold over there and now it feels a little bit like a file folder and this card fits in this pocket perfectly there you go. And now I'm going to assemble the tag that comes in the pocket pocket. So this is the pocket pocket tag. <clears throat> I'm going to fold in half because I already scored it. I'm sure things will line up here. And like with the tabs, I only now will cut these corners here. Add some ink where I cut. And you can use it like this, so it will fit in here perfectly. But I'm just going to add an extra eyelet here, just in the front one. Of course, you can embellish these in such different ways. This is just one way. There. I'm actually going to add one of these bulb pins here. And later on, I can attach something else on here as well. Like this. So embellish these as you like. And I'm going to slide this in here. Now this piece above the tag actually looks a bit empty here. So I'm going to add this embellishment card. I'm going to put this out for a bit. simply going to glue this one in here in the center and now it's not as empty anymore on top and now I'm going to show you how to assemble the envelopes that go into these pockets those are these very simple very very simple just fold this and I'm going to use my narrow tape again here and I'm going to put some tape on the edge here of one of these flaps on the front. And I'm going to put again some of this tape on the inside this time. 
Is it true? Yeah, on the inside this time, on this bottom flap. That's it. So, oh yeah, if you didn't print a back design here, you can add some ink on this, so the whole flap here, um, about the top of this part here. So this part needs to be inked, otherwise it will be white or colored or whatever you can do to put some color on there. Oops, I was a bit too soon with that one, sorry. So I'm going to remove the tape from the center one, close it and then close that one on top and then close this one on the bottom. And now you have your envelope like this and it will fit nicely in here. And you see, because I put this um, pocket low enough, it will not peek out the top here. And I'm going to assemble this one just the same way. So here's my second one, and this just fits right in here. You can add a closure if you want to these envelopes here. And now I'm going to quickly show you how to make these. These will fit into this side pocket here. So let me show you how to make this one. So just fold the four score lines. And then the side flaps go in first and the bottom flap will come on top. And actually wherever these two overlap, the side and the bottom, there you can add glue or tape. So I'm going to use this time a very narrow tape here. You can use wider tape, but then because these are so small, I'm a bit more sure that they're not going to be too big. But the whole place where these two overlap can be um, glue or tape. So, like this. And now again, you can add a closure, etc. And these will nicely fit in this side pocket. So, this is the other one. Here you go. So this is starting to be a very sturdy and filled layered folio. So now I'm going to show you how to make the card that goes in here. Again, I already scored this, so fold in half. And for that, I have this tab. If you want, you can, you can just use it like this, you know, but I'm going to add this tab here and only now going to cut it out like this and because these are curved edges I'm going to elongate these this center line just to know where I need to score on my scoreboard you can eyeball it if you have good eyes There you go. I'm gonna fold this in half. And again, I'm going to only cut this now. Well, since each part is gonna come on one side of the card, you're not really going to see it, but still. Especially the top parts, those are, those really need to be aligned this there let's check yes well done Tina and if not definitely add some ink and all will be hidden there and now I'm going to glue this yeah you can glue it here or on this side you can choose Going to put some glue all over. And I'm going to line up these corners now, these pointies, with the top of the tab and of course in the center. With the top of the card, I mean. There, and now I'm going to close it like this. And if you want, you can add an extra eyelet in here as well. And now this fits right into this beautiful pocket here. And now I only have these embellishments left. 
So if you want, you can cut out these words or maybe you have a little machine that can make these. I'm going to cut these out. these edges real quick so they look a bit older I'm going to glue this here there of course you don't have to add these it's optional and this label Gonna add right here. Put that back in. And now we're almost ready. So it closes like this. I'm going to add my thread here. You can add a ribbon if you like, but I have this grungy looking thread here that I'm going to use. It actually works really well with the faux thread here and here. Um, let's measure this. Well, it is 24, it's like 34 inches, it's like 85 centimeters it is, uh, but it's probably too long, I'm gonna check. So I'm gonna go back to four, this is just how I do it, you can do it differently. So I'm going to fold these to the back and one of these I'm going to put inside one of these eyelets or put it underneath this little flap and let it come out outside here or let it come out at the top and now with the other thread you can just make a nice little bow it's actually a bit too much so I'm going to make the bow smaller and cut off what I think is excess so I said So I cut off about 8 inches, 20 centimeters. So yeah, you really need to see for yourself how you're going to close this, etc. And how much you need. And also I'm going to attach this little golden clip on the top. If you don't want this flap for the closure with the whole ribbon thingy, you can just simply get one of these and hold the whole folio closed with this clip. Just going to put this on top as well. And it's ready! We're there! That's it! Look how beautiful this is! Thank you so much for watching this video. Again, if you would like to download all the principles that I used to make this beautiful mini project, you can opt in via the link in the description. And if you have crafty friends that you think might like this idea as well, just send the link to this video. You can share it on your social media, etc. And the only thing left to say is... Please enjoy crafting and have a really wonderful day. Bye-bye.